Hi, let's talk about how we can use a capacitor, especially a supercapacitor, to build a circuit that will provide temporary backup for about a few seconds. So we have a load, we have a capacitor that's providing current to the circuit. Why do we need a capacitor instead of batteries then? Remember, the load could be an embedded circuit which needs a proper shutdown and so we need a few seconds. So if we have a capacitor, then one, we don't need or there's no need for a battery protection circuit. That's the first advantage. The second, we don't have to worry about or no discharge protection or over discharge protection required. You cannot over discharge a capacitor and number three is no complex charging circuit you don't need any complex chargers so charging a capacitor is fairly simple yeah the only time you need some complexity is when they are connected in series so you need to have balanced them out but that's not the case we are looking here now we need to provide some power now Let's assume if it's a Raspberry Pi, we need to provide power for about 30 seconds. That's good enough for us to shut, do a shutdown on our Pi. And if I look at a Pi 0W, it's about 5 volts of input and current is approximately 300 milliamps or 0 0.3 amps. That's what we need for 30 seconds. If we have to power this mm, so if we compute power is equal to voltage into current that's 5 into 0 0.3 amperes which is uh, 1.5 watts now watt is ability to do or consume energy so power would be equal to energy consumed or given per unit of time energies and joules so 1.5 watts can be written as 1.5 joules or 1.5 joules per second so we have to store about 1.5 joules of energy for or give 1.5 joules for 30 seconds continuously so provide uh, 1.5 joules for 30 seconds means uh, oh sorry um, means 1.5 into 30 which is about 45 uh, joules of stored energy so we need to store about 45 joules now energy stored in a capacitor is given as uh, energy stored in a capacitor is equal to half c v square so v is the voltage to which the capacitor is charged so we have 45 to half c into voltage we are taking 2.7 that's the typical volt for a lot of supercapacitors so this implies uh, c is equal to 45 into 2 by 2.7 square and that would be equal to 45 into 290 divided by uh, 2.7 x square equal to 12.34 this is 12.34 sorry not joules okay I apologize it's 12.34 farads that's the capacitance required to store 45 joules of energy perfect but now let's take into consideration some practical aspects practical considerations okay now we need if you remember voltage that is required by a pi is 5 volts whereas the voltage that 
we can charge the super cap too is about 2.7 so what we need across the cap is some kind of a boost converter converter and at the load end the boost converter gives 5 volts and on the input side it gets 2.7 but remember boost converters um, don't work below a certain threshold so uh, let's say the threshold is 1 volt so that's the minimum voltage for the boost converter boost converter above which it will work so this capacitor which is charged to 2.7 volts is not going to work below 1 volt so we can assume that it's charged to 1.7 volts actually so now energy stored 45 joules has to be recomputed for capacitance value so 45 into 2 okay we'll do 45 into 2 by 1.7 square that's about 90 divided by 1.1.7 so 2.89 that's about 31.14 so that's the real value of capacitance that we require so 31.14 farad that's what we need to compute for what we can do is we can have two capacitances of 15 farads each in parallel that gives us about 30 farads perfect no still one more thing the so real capacitors are not exact values so plus 10 percent to minus 30 percent is what the data sheet says for the cap, uh, super cap that i have so that could mean anywhere between 10 farads to 16.5 farads for a 15 farad capacitor so to be on the safe side if we take uh, safe side uh, we can take three of these 15 farad capacitors put them in parallel and we still don't need any kind of a balanced charger because the 15 15 15 3 15 farad capacitors exactly 2.7 volts across and again if we do uh, 15 15 and 15 so we get 45 farads in total and now if we compute these 45 farads once again plus and minus so 45 and 70 30 so 31.5 so if if each one of them is minus 30 percent from the rated value we get 31.5 fairly accurate number perfect so hope this clears basic concepts of how we can take a supercapacitor and we can compute what is the capacitance value that is required to be able to provide power temporarily to our embedded systems so that we have ample time to clean up and shut down safely. Thank you. If you like this video, please click the like button subscribe and in your comments to let me know if you find any errors or if you have any questions suggestions in the next videos i will build a circuit and test this theory out until then thank you bye bye